after viewing this video, you will be able to create an orbital diagram when presented with a given element. Orbital. The area where you are likely to find an electron. This will be represented with a box in the orbital diagram. So, that little box below is going to be your orbital in the orbital diagram. Did you know? The colors you see is just a wavelength of energy. Our eyes are very sensitive. They can only see a small amount of energy, and that energy you see is called visible light. If somehow we could change our eyes, and we could see a wider range of energy, well, then we would actually have what would be more colors that we see. So imagine if it was just a little bit wider of a range, and then we could see some of the UV rays and the infrared rays. Pretty cool, huh? Rules for drawing orbital diagrams. The first rule, the off-bow principle. That just means electrons are added to the lowest energy level first, and each sublevel must be full before beginning another. Second rule, the Pauli exclusion principle. No more than two electrons are in an orbital, and the must have spin in the opposite direction. So that will just mean the arrows are pointed in opposite directions. Third rule, Hund's rule. Before an orbital can hold two electrons, all orbitals in a sublevel must contain at least one electron. And the fourth rule, each successive sublevel must be drawn slightly higher because each sublevel has a little bit more energy. So we're going to draw those slightly higher because each one will have more energy. So let's start off with an example of the orbital diagram for carbon. Electron configuration for carbon, well, we need to figure out how many electrons we have first. And so for carbon, we have, that's right, six electrons, because it is an atomic number of six. And so we would have a 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now for the orbital diagram, we need to write our sublevel, the 1s, and draw the orbital. Now with the next uh, sublevel, write the 2s and draw the second orbital. Now pertaining to rule number 4, each successive sublevel must be drawn slightly higher. That's good. So then we move on to the 2p. We'll draw three of those. Now the reason why we draw three is because each orbital can hold two electrons. And we have to draw all three. You know we're only going to have two if, if you look at the electron configuration. Now, when I fill in my uh, electrons, I'm going to point the first arrow pointing up. Uh, I have to put it in the lowest energy level first because that was pertaining to our first rule. And then I fill in my second electron pointing down because I have to have spins in the opposite direction. And remember that any orbital cannot hold more than two electrons at any given time. So then I have to move on to the next sublevel. One, two. And then rule number three. Before an orbital can hold two electrons, all orbitals in a sublevel must have one electron. And so I'm going to space them out. Again, I still have my three orbitals in my two piece sublevel because it can hold up to six electrons. However, I'm only drawing the two. And so, so I'm going to keep all three orbitals, all three boxes. But. I'm going to just draw my two arrows in the first and second box. So I'll draw one right here, and I'll draw one right here. Orbital diagram for magnesium. So let's first ask ourselves, 
how many electrons does magnesium have? Give up? That's right. 12. And so let's figure out the electron configuration. And that would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So we need to draw our different sublevels, or 1s, 2s. And see, we have our 1s. We're going to have our 2s, we'll have our 2p, and we'll have our 3s. So there's our 2p, and here's our 3s. Now, we need to fill in the electrons. And what's great is because we have this 2 exponent up here, that's going to tell us we have 2 electrons in our 1s sublevel. And so down here, in our 1s, we should have 1, 2. Then we go to our 2s and we look at that 2 and that will tell us we should have, that's right, 2 electrons in our 2s. So 1, 2. Again we have to draw them uh, with opposite spins. So one arrow pointed up, one pointing down. Then we look at our 2p which has 6. So we have to again uh, fill them in with one going up, one going down. Make sure though that each one gets one first before we can fill them in. Excellent. And then our 3s2. So one pointed up, one pointed down. Now if you count all those arrows, we should have 12. Yeah. All right, good. So now let's do an orbital diagram for copper. So again, let's ask ourselves, how many electrons does copper have? So I'm looking at the periodic table, and we would have 26 electrons. And so let's do our electron configuration for copper. Uh, that would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. Now again, you might be going, wait, wait, uh, uh, there's a 3D after the 4S. Don't worry. 3D has a little bit more energy than the 4S, and so it's going to be drawn actually later. So, that being said, let's move our electron configuration up, and we'll draw our little orbital diagram. So there's our 1S. Let's draw our 2S. Next will be our 2Ps. And our 3S. And our 3p's and our 4s's and then we'll draw 3d's because if you look across the periodic table you'll notice that the d row we can actually have up to 10 electrons and so that's why again we have to draw five orbitals because each one can hold two electrons now let's fill in our little electrons again we look at our 1s and so we have two electrons and of course down here in our 1s we'll put in our two electrons one, two. For our 2s, we also have two electrons. One, two. Our 2p, we have six. One, two, three. Again, each one has to go in a separate one first before we can fill them in. Then we move on to our 3s. Uh, then we go to our 3p. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that'll be your six in our 3p. Then we gotta fill in our 4s. And now we only have six in a 3D. So again, we have to fill in each one first before we can fill in a second one. So notice how since I have five orbitals, I fill in each one of those first before I can move on to the second. And now we have our 3D6. And that is our orbital diagram for copper.